In the last class, we were talking about transmission lines and the telegraphers equations and we concluded that at any point on an ideal transmission line, the voltage can be expressed as the sum of a forward going wave V plus and a backward going wave V minus, right. The forward going wave is associated with a current which is I plus and the backward going wave is by the same token V minus by Z naught. The total voltage at any point therefore is V plus plus V minus while the total current at any point the line is V plus minus V minus by Z naught. Recall that Z naught is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and is given by square root of L by C where L is the inductance per unit length and C is the capacitance per unit length. So, as the wave propagates, the positive going wave, in other words, the wave going towards the right keeps getting delayed and uh, the, uh, so for instance, if the delay corresponding to this section of the line is T d, then the positive going wave at the right end is going to be given by V plus e to the minus s t d in the frequency domain because the wave which is traveling towards your right is going to get delayed as it uh, travels. So, and e to the minus s t d is simply the transfer function of an ideal delay with a value t d. Similarly, uh, v minus on the other hand must be advanced when you look at it at the blue boundary. So, that is getting delayed as it moves towards the left and therefore, uh, at the black boundary it appears as V minus. All right. Now, let us see some applications of, uh, it turns out that these are very useful relations uh, to know while uh, analyzing circuits with transmission lines. So, in this course we are only going to look at idle transmission lines and uh, so, for example, consider what happens when you are at the boundary. So, here we do not know what is happening towards the left side. Uh, the, trans the ideal transmission line is uh, terminated by an impedance Z sub L and uh, just at the interface we have let us call the positive going wave as V plus and the negative going wave as V minus and the total voltage is simply V plus plus V minus. The total current is V plus minus V minus by Z naught. So, that is the total current and that is the total voltage and therefore, uh, this is the constraint imposed by the transmission line and uh, the terminating impedance however, imposes a constraint due to Ohm's law of V by I is nothing but Zn. 
all right so this means that we should now be able to figure out what the reverse going wave is in terms of the forward going wave and uh, that's what we will do going forward so v plus plus v minus must be v plus minus v minus by z naught times z l so this is uh, the voltage this on the other hand is the current and therefore v plus plus v minus into z naught is v plus minus v minus into z l which means that v minus into z naught plus z l is v plus into z l minus z naught so we therefore have v minus over v plus is nothing but z l minus z naught by z l plus z naught in other words if you have a transmission line which is terminated at one end by an impedance z sub l then ohm's law has to be satisfied as far as the impedance is concerned as far as the terminating impedance zl is concerned uh, however the forward and backward going waves on the transmission line must so what this basically means is that the impedance zl imposes a constraint due to ohm's law however the transmission line also imposes constraints in the sense that the quantities on the transmission line must obey the telegrapher's equation so uh, at the interface both these relationships must be satisfied and that's why we have a constraint that the reflected wave is dependent on the terminating impedance and the characteristic impedance of the transmission line of course it's uh, uh, it's proportional to uh, the amplitude of the incident wave so this quantity zl minus z naught by zl plus z naught is called the reflection coefficient and is often denoted by the greek symbol capital gamma so this is the reflection coefficient all right and uh, if zl is frequency dependent so in other words zl of j omega then the reflection coefficient is also a function of frequency and is given by zl of j omega minus z naught by z l of j omega plus z naught all right and uh, let's do some sanity checks the first case we consider is when z l is an open circuit So in this case gamma our formula is telling us that gamma which is zl minus z naught by zl plus z naught is simply plus 1 because zl tends to infinity right and why does that make intuitive sense 
at the end of the transmission line where we had ZL being infinity. So, we have an open circuit and uh, the property of an open circuit as we all know is that this current I is 0. If the current I is 0, the current is nothing but V plus minus V minus by Z naught which must be 0 which can only happen when V minus is equal to V plus which is equivalent to saying gamma is 1. Okay. Um, let us now look at another example. ZL is a short circuit. So, gamma then is nothing but 0 minus Z naught by 0 plus Z naught which is equal to minus 1. And uh, how do we figure this out? This is when the voltage here is 0 and uh, the voltage at the end of the transmission line is V plus plus V minus which is equal to 0 which means that V minus is equal to minus V plus. All right. So, uh, so this means that gamma is equivalent to say that gamma is minus 1. Okay. Now, let us take the third case where the impedance is exactly the same as the characteristic impedance of the line and the formula is telling us that gamma is Z L which is equal to Z naught minus Z naught by Z naught plus Z naught which is equal to 0. Right? And uh, why does this make intuitive sense? This is saying that if you terminate a transmission line an ideal transmission line with its characteristic impedance, the reflected wave is 0, the amplitude of the reflected wave is 0. And why does that make sense? Well, you can think of this as follows. Assume that you had an infinitely long line with the same characteristic impedance. So, this is our line with Z naught and this goes to infinity. So, this is also Z naught, right. As far as the wave is concerned, this looks like a continuous transmission line which goes to infinity. So, nothing can get reflected back from infinity because it takes an infinitely long time to come back. So, as far as uh, the uh, transmission line is concerned, the, uh, the backward going wave is concerned that is or to be 0, which uh, uh, of course, is also borne out by the uh, by the form, right. And uh, so, intuitively of course, you know you can think of it as a transmission line which is continuing on up to, to infinity. Now, if you have a transmission line with a time delay T d, and a characteristic impedance Z naught and it is terminated by an arbitrary impedance Z L. The question is what happens, what is the looking in impedance here, all right. And uh, to do that, you know this, uh, we just use the techniques that we have developed just now. So, let us assume that this is V plus this as we just discussed is gamma times V plus where gamma is Z L minus Z naught by Z L plus Z naught. Let me write that down here. Okay. Now, if the wave at the right end of the transmission line was V plus, then it must follow that 
the forward going wave at the left end of the line must be must have been there a time td earlier so this must be v plus e to the s plus s times td because after delaying it by td it is v plus at the right angle right in a similar fashion the left going wave at the left end is basically or the backward going wave at the left end is nothing but gamma v plus e to the minus s t d because the wave going towards the left has gotten delayed by a time t. Hmm? So, uh, what comment can we make about the voltage at the, the total voltage at the left end of the line? The voltage is nothing but the sum of the forward going wave and the backward going wave. So, that is nothing but V plus e to the s t d plus gamma v plus e to the minus s t d. The current is nothing but v plus e to the s t d by z naught minus gamma v plus e to the minus s t d by z naught. So, the impedance z in of s is simply the ratio of the voltage to the current at the left end of the line and that is nothing but v plus into e to the power s t d plus gamma e to the minus s t d divided by v plus e to the s t d minus gamma e to the minus s t d. So, the impedance is simply given by sorry uh, this times z. The impedance is simply given by z in of s is z naught times e to the s t d plus gamma e to the minus s t d by e to the s t d minus gamma e to the minus And all that we have done, all that we have used uh, to get this relationship is simply observe two things. One, at the boundary condition, Ohm's law must be satisfied along with the telegrapher's equations. And at the uh, along the line, the forward wave propagates towards the right, the backward wave propagates towards the left and they have the same delay. At the left end of the line, the total voltage is the sum of the forward and the backward going waves and similarly, the current is the sum of uh, the current due to the forward going wave which is in the right and the current that is due to the backward going wave which is in the opposite direction. So, uh, the current uh, has to be uh, the two currents have to be subtracted from each other. So, and the impedance is simply the ratio of the voltage to the current and uh, with that we get this expression. Now, let us take a look at this expression uh, you know, not only to uh, get familiar with it, but also uh, a useful practical case. Uh, a special case occurs uh, remember that when you are doing this the sinusoidal steady state then this now all these become s equal to j omega. So, this is nothing but z naught e to the j omega t d plus gamma e to the minus j omega t d divided by e to the j omega t d minus gamma e to the minus j omega t d. 
a special case occurs Uh, I, when omega td is pi by 2 all right so what does this uh, what does it actually mean uh, remember that omega is 2 pi f times td is pi over 2 which basically means that td is 1 fourth Okay. And uh, let us stare at this and try and see if we can interpret this physically. 1 over f is nothing but the time period of the, of the uh, sinusoid, right. The input sinusoid is at the frequency f. 1 over f therefore is a time period. And in one time period of the wave, a wave will travel one wavelength. So, this Td if it is chosen such that omega T d is, is uh, 90 degrees or pi by 2 radians, intuitively or physically that corresponds to the delay of the transmission line being equal to a quarter wave. So, this is a what is called a quarter wave. Okay. Now, uh, so z in or j omega, if this is the case, then uh, e to the j by uh, e to the j omega t d is simply given by cos pi by 2 plus j sin pi by 2, which is simply nothing but j. All right. So, z in of j omega is nothing but j. So, uh, I mean e to the j omega t d is nothing but j. So, z in is nothing but z naught times j plus gamma times minus j. So, that becomes and this becomes j plus which is nothing but z naught times 1 minus gamma by 1 plus gamma and we call that gamma is nothing but z l minus z naught by z l plus z naught. So, which basically means that the looking in impedance is nothing but z naught times uh, z l plus z naught 1 minus z l minus z naught by z l plus z naught divided by 1 plus z l minus z naught by z l does okay and uh, this is basically z naught times 2 z naught divided by 2 z l therefore z in of j omega is z naught square by z. All right. So, as you can see, the uh, the impedance looking in on the left is an inverted version of the terminating impedance. So, uh, uh, 
and uh, so if you put a capacitor it will look like an inductor an open circuit so if zl is open z in will look like a short if zl is a short z in will look like an open circuit if zl is uh, inductive then uh, it will look like uh, so this is inductive this will look like minus j times z not square by x and therefore this looks capacitive But the key point to note is that all this only happens at that frequency okay uh, which makes the length of the line equal to quarter of the wave 